www.o.nz, watiatv.com, and broadcast on Face TV, Sky Channel 83. Tonight, we look at cannabis. In studio, Māori Community Drug Councillor Shane White, Cannabis Law Reform President Chris Fowley. On Skype tonight, Labour Party Spokesperson on Medicinal Cannabis, Damien O'Connor, and joining us via phone, Green Party MP and Health Spokesperson Kevin Haig. Thank you, panel, for joining us. 5,000 New Zealanders die from tobacco annually, and 1,000 die each year from alcohol. There has not been one reported overdose death from cannabis in New Zealand's history. Sir Paul Henry, Martin Crowe, and Helen Kelly have all become criminals for being forced to take cannabis illegally to counter their pain from terminal illness. And somehow, New Zealand has ended up being more repressed on cannabis reform than the United States, the home of the war on drugs. Why are we so hell-bent on punishing and locking up so many New Zealanders for a drug far less dangerous than legal ones? Kevin, if I go home tonight after the show, kick off my shoes, switch on Fox News, order a pizza and smoke a joint, one, who am I hurting? And two, why should I be arrested? Well, you're hurting no one at all. And I don't believe you should be arrested. So uh, the, I guess the issue is where did this come from? And of course, since probably about the 1960s, we've actually had the war on drugs raging away internationally, and you don't really bought into that. Mm. Um, so while that's now receding in most other countries pretty rapidly as they abandon their uh, get tough on drugs laws, because I mean, put simply, they don't work. Uh, New Zealand st still seems to be fairly slow at, uh, at picking up on that. Mm. And there's some pluses to that. You know, so, the, uh, I mean, my, my personal belief is that we need to move to a sort of legalised and, and regulated status for cannabis. Yep. Um, and when we look around the world, we're now starting to see a variety of different approaches to how that might be done. So you, you've got... Um, in Colorado, for example, you've got essentially a free for all, like a free market in, in cannabis, whereas yeah. in Uruguay, you've got instead a kind of state supply situation, sort of a bit, bit like the way the Swedes do alcohol. Yeah. So New Zealand's in the position of being able to look at those different approaches and say, okay, well, which of them seems to work best? Which one works best for us? But, you know, I'm, I'm trying to make a a benefit out of out of something I think find actually quite frustrating, which is that we've been slow to the party. Kevin, if 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 the prohibition of cannabis is a health issue primarily, why aren't we arresting Ronald McDonald and Colonel Sanders? Because heart disease kills far more New Zealanders than cannabis has in 176 years. Oh yeah, I agree absolutely, and um, some. Some people will, will know that I've now given you know many speeches in Parliament where I've pointed out that what we actually need is rather than the sort of piecemeal hodgepodge of, of law that actually makes no sense and is entirely inconsistent, mm. particularly in the way that it, it um, deals with uh, alcohol and tobacco, which are that much more dangerous drugs than cannabis. Mm. Um, uh, I think rather than that approach, what we need is a single legal framework that takes health as a starting point rather than criminal justice and says, well, um, each of these drugs probably does have some risk of harm. Uh, let's actually regulate them in proportion to their risk of harm. And uh, what you would see then is a considerably greater availability of cannabis um, uh, and uh, and uh, con uh, considerably more regulation around alcohol, for example. Shane, the original laws against cannabis in America were racistly aimed at Mexicans, and that racism continues today in New Zealand. Between 1994 and 2011, the rate for 10 to 16-year-old Māori apprehended for drug possession that led to prosecution doubled doubled compared to white New Zealanders. How many Māori need to be criminalised before we start to need, see the need for some reform? I think that's a really good question. 
No, no, Kevin, that was to Shane. That was Shane. <laughs> Shane, go for it. Well, I would hope none. I mean, yep. it, it, you, you make that example with, with cannabis, but it, it, you know, it, it's a Māori experience that goes across the wall, whether yep. it's traffic, mm. whether it's dishonesty. You know, that's the way the system is for us. Yeah. You know, it's seven times more likely to end up in a bad result just because of your of your race. Yeah. Uh, although everyone, everyone through the whole system will deny it. it's not me. Yeah. But you know, you're the most likely looking. Yeah. Um, so you know, that's that's part of the, the part of the the, the the complex issues that they face Maori. Yeah. Uh, you, you know, they likewise New Zealand's one of the heaviest users of cannabis. Yep. Uh, there's still a lot of Māori that live rurally, mm -hmm. but you know, even though a lot of our focus is on the, 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 there's a few other drugs you didn't mention there that are, that, that you know, like methamphetamine, a, um, like, that are decimating yeah. the regions at the moment. Yep. That's right, and and, and even the, the 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 range of synthetics that are coming out now, yeah, that that, mm -hmm. that almost hark back to the old LSD days when some you know we've had young people that have one use and have never come back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah and yeah. you know, and, and, and that, that's um, you know that's sort of put to the side, and, and it, it, it amazes me how much the whole synthetic stuff has popped up now because yes. it's got this legal connotation sort of to it. What do the people mm. in the communities you work in, what do they need? Uh, when it comes to, 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 to drug reform? Uh, for start, the, the, um, stop feeding the whole criminal justice system. I agree yep. with, with the, the health issue, yep. uh, but it is different strokes for different folks. You know, uh, what sort of um, health problems come out happen with our kids not that much yep. but they turn into bloody useless students right uh, you know and they become very demoti uh, demotivated and awesome um, <laughs> at call of duty. but not yeah, much yeah. else right so the, the, the lack of motivation at younger ages sort of does concern me uh, but uh, even within the Maori community traditionally there's been uh, our elders that have been very anti this whole the demon drug yep and 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 um, and, and, and it's only just now that they're realising there's actually much worse drugs in right. even tiny little communities whose names I don't want to say, yep. um, that you can't buy a pops, popsicle at, there's yep. no shop, and yet there's methamphetamine and synthetic there. Right. And so mm -hmm. that's actually changed the the, the the words coming out of elders, oh, actually, the other stuff's better. At least no one's mm -hmm. getting shot. Right. You're not having this craziness. Yeah. You're right. not having this... Uh, so, you know, uh, different strokes with different folks. Damien, uh, you're a good man doing good things. Prohibition <coughs> of cannabis puts at least $500 million into the gangs every single year. Why do politicians in New Zealand love helping organise crime? <laughs> well, it's a, it's a very good question, and I've had numerous discussions on this, and took away cannabis from the gangs, they just move into some other area. I don't believe that just legalisation removes the gang issue and the potential for them to use a harmful substance for that, that's illegal for trading purposes and making money. They'll come up with something new. So, so But we would be able to tax it though, wouldn't or, we? We could tax it. Uh, and, and you know what's happened overseas, of course, you talk to Colorado, and, and the big corporations like the cigarette companies will move in and take over control of it. Now, I'm not a fan, a fan of that, yep. but one of the realities of legalisation and taxation is that you then simply shift cannabis into the big corporate world. And I don't think anyone I've spoken to wants to go there. Right. Um, how much pain do you think, uh, Damien, that Helen Kelly has to go through before Peter Dunn gets over himself and actually admits that medicinal cannabis does have some positive impact? No, it shouldn't be too much at all. I think, and I said on the Select Committee in 2002, that, that study cannabis for a year, we came up with a report, one of the recommendations was look further into the use of medic, uh, medicinal cannabis. Yep. And I fully support that. And, and in fact, you know, it hasn't gone anywhere and politicians from all parties have, you know, can be blamed. We, it, it's a tricky area, which is, you know, I've discovered. Yep. Um, I came into it off the back of that knowledge and then with a constituent who clearly needed some help because we'd run out of other alternatives. Yep. Many people like that. Helen's the same. Yep. Look, medicinal cannabis is like any other drug and it should be available like any other drug. Absolutely. Um, and, and we do have to have... You know, some kind of prescribing criteria. Yep. 
And I guess that's where it gets really tricky. You right. Know, do we just let people grow a couple of plants for self-medication um, yep. or do we go through a GP or whatever? And that's, that's currently the discussion. But you would agree, would you not, that AIDS sufferers or people are with cancer or with terminal illness, they're not criminals, right? No, they're not. And, and neither... I guess are people who use it for recreational use. Look, I I studied also uh, expungement uh, law, and you yeah. know, and we've now got it in place. If you keep your nose clean for ten years, you know, the rec your record's cleaned. It, it should be like that. But there's no doubt that there's there's some harm comes from all drugs we've sure, talked about. Sure. So adding another one, and and what has happened overseas is that the uptake has increased often. Um, of marijuana, where it's been legalised or decriminalised. And, and my philosophical position has been that, well, we haven't sorted out care for those people who are harmed by alcohol and tobacco properly. We haven't looked after them. So before we go adding another complication to our, our drug harm, let's sort out the one around alcohol for a start. So it's we're not in a perfect world. We're not starting from a perfect position. We certainly are. But... Uh, Chris, but, but, Chris, some American yeah, states be, have about. have gone beyond medicinal cannabis to outright legalisation. Mm -hmm. Billions are being raised in taxation. Police arrests have dived. And every single negative social impact of cannabis mm. has declined. If mm. Americans, of all people, <laughs> who love their war on drugs, mm. if they can see reason, why is it taking so long in New Zealand for us to catch up? Uh, well, this is a very good question, but um, I mean, when you even have um, Damien O'Connor who sat on it, the committee and knows it all, and he then, knows, he knows. Due respect, he's still saying some things that are just not quite right. I mean, we don't have to let big business take over. That hasn't happened in America, for example. Yep. Um, you know, it's very much a grassroots kind of system there. Colorado described as the, the sort of free for all, but it's yep. not. They have testing at every level. They, they have labeling requirements. They just did a recall of about 60,000 plants that were found to have some minute pesticide level on them. Right. I mean, you know, they, they license them. They have age limits. They pay special taxes. They're raising more taxes now through cannabis in Colorado yep. than they do through alcohol. And that oh. lets you solve those problems that we have for alcohol. So rather than saying, oh, we have these problems with alcohol and things, yes, we do. Yep. We do have those problems. Yep. Part of the reason we have all these problems is because we're tying up 300 police who are chasing the pot smokers. Yep. Just the pot smokers. 300, yep. that's the, the amount of time they're spending. 300 cops. What if those 300 cops were a gang-busting, dedicated workforce? Amen. Or what if we took the money that we're spending on sending people to jail and we gave it to people who are helping people? And, and so that people can get help when they need it. And so they're not fearing getting busted, which is the number one reason why people don't seek help. Kevin, between 2007 and 2013, we have imprisoned 1,627 New Zealanders and we convicted 20,694 for, for, for possession of cannabis and bongs. Bongs, Kevin. <laughs> How, 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 many, how many more New Zealanders do we need to blight with prison before we sort of get over the, all of the moral crusading here? Yeah, well, I, mean, I agree with your point, Martin, that uh, the, the, the cost of the current law um, is measured in like, dramatic negative impacts from enforcement activity on... Uh, people's lives and um, picking up on, on your questions to Shane earlier on those are disproportionately felt by, by young Māori people so you know the, 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 the war on drugs approach of, of um, arrest and incarceration uh, has not uh, reduced consumption, it's not reduced harm it's actually just increased harm or produced harm from the enforcement activity no, so, so I think even if you uh, were to approach it just from that point of view, uh, uh -huh. than from from the rational point of view that I'm advocating, you would say, well, this isn't working. You know, and in terms of in terms of um, in terms of availability, you know, the, the reality is that uh, any one of us, um, if we wanted to 
obtain cannabis could um, could this evening very easily obtain cannabis. Well, I know a lot and, of people uh, in Auckland right now who would love to know where that is, Gavin. There's a terrible <laughs> drought, apparently, uh, of cannabis. So if you do know somebody, give us a call later. Um, Shane, how easy, how easy is it for kids in whānau to get cannabis? It's, it's much easier to get synthetic in Auckland. Mm. You're, really? You're dead right. Yeah. Synthetic yep. is, the, right. is the, the cash crop of the moment. Yep. Um, you don't have to wait three months for it to, be, to, be, yep. um, for it to grow. You know, uh, um, but the synthetic has a lot of issues with it. A lot of issues. People go mm. a little bit... Yes, indeed. Mm. But, uh, but uh, uh, the, the amount of psychotic in there means that you get a huge bang for your buck. And for the younger generation, that's quite a good thing. The drug testing regimes have, have brought this, this whole other... You know, I, I know a guy who's been a, 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 a marijuana mm. smoker all his life, yep. drug driver, and he's just had to change to synthetic to get around the drug testing. And now, in first time ever, he's crashed his truck and he can't actually even talk properly anymore. And, you know, from a lifetime wow. of smoking marijuana to six months of smoking synthetic, mm. um, he's a different person. Right. Mm. And I think of the three or four young people that, there's some that, that we've, we've helped put into um, uh, the bin. Yep. Mm. What um, do you think that legalising marijuana for health use will reduce addiction amongst Māori? There's a lot of drivers for addiction, you know, and, and uh, 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 you know, key to it all really is this whole, you know, true, there's a lot of people just want to enjoy themselves, have a nice kickback. Sure. That those that are self-medicating to yep. deal with their despair, their poverty, or their um, um, alienation, yep. um, legal or illegal doesn't really matter. Yeah. Yeah, uh, you yeah. know, the, 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 the amount of Māori community that's rural that have no economic base, that that's the only income, yep. it's become accepted, um, you know, because uh, sure. in, in, the, in the scale of things, the least harm sure. comes out of that. Sure. Uh, yeah. Damien, yeah. dairy prices have slumped and the river of white gold has dried up to a small creek. Mm -hmm. We could grow the best quality cannabis in the world here. Shouldn't we be actively cultivating a hemp industry rather than chasing the failed dairy intensification model? Well, well, without bagging dairy, they've been getting enough of that this week. You're quite right. And in fact, New Zealand missed the opportunity with, with opium and poppies, of yep. course, that Tasmania has picked up. Yep. And actually, really, it was, it was encouraging to see in the Grow, that's the horticultural magazine last yep. month, that they had a big article on, on this very issue. And... So, yes, I think we could, under obviously, under some good guidance, strict regulations, sure, to sure, make sure. sure that what they're growing is going to be effective. And, of course, there are two directions in which we have to head, um, you know, for, for marijuana. And, and, and clearly those are ones which have high levels of THC for yep. pain relief. Yep. And then we've got high levels of CBD, of course, for, for people who have seizures and, and many of the children. So it, it, it must be kind of scientifically developed of course. to be successful. Do you think, I mean, I'm just looking at those those dairy prices again, and you're, you're very connected to this community, uh, Damien. Those farmers, they are doing it bloody hard at the moment, and that $40 billion worth of debt that they're sitting on doesn't make it very easy. And I don't see, and, and maybe you might have some insight here, I don't know, I can't see those dairy prices rising anytime soon. Isn't it time for us to actually start looking at alternatives for those farmers? Oh, absolutely, and I've been saying that for ages. I mean, the government's been sitting on its hands. Yep. It, it's fun to do anything about the meat industry. You know, lambs are worth $80 when they should be worth 150 because there's no coordination. Yep. You're absolutely right. There are other things that we should be doing. Um, and, you know, long-term, yep. medical marijuana might be one of those things. I'm not opposed to that at all. Excellent. I think growing hemp as a fibre, yes. you know, is a bit of a struggle in a in a country that has an abundance of fibre through wood and wool and different things. I mean, hemp's, hemp's an option. Yep. Um, people have looked at that, um, but I'm not sure how viable medical uh, cannabis, on the other hand, yes. you know, that has huge potential. And, yep. and from a country like ours that has great reputation, we should be doing it. Um, Chris, the tobacco and booze industries, they have the National Party in their pocket. And, 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 and you can see, you can mm. see when the, when, 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 when the politicians are debating uh, the booze laws recently, um, you know, that, that level of power they've got over national to water down any of the real uh, teeth of that legislation, that they seem to be under an immense amount of influence from those industries. Is that the reason why national is so slow on actually doing anything on cannabis reform? 
Well, I'm not sure. I, I think they're intensely poll driven and to the, mm. up to this point their perception has been that this is not a vote winner and that's been the perception of most politicians and right. I think we've seen a real shift in the last year. Um, one of the shifts has been for the first time people have spoken out in public who haven't been before the courts yep. and who haven't been arrested by the police and I'm speaking in particular about um, the, the mothers giving it to their children and yep. things like this that yep. have happened over the last year and people have spoken out. Paul Holmes' house Paul was Holmes. not raided posthumously. You know yeah. what I mean? This yeah, sort of yeah, thing yeah, has yeah, happened yeah, in the past, yeah, right? Yeah, 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 Les yeah. Gray went on Paul Holmes back yep. in the 80s, raided the next day. That's locked, right, that's right. Yeah, yeah, you know, I remember really that. stunted yeah. his career, had a yeah. chilling effect on professionals for yeah, 20 yeah. years. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, this sort of thing has gone on in the past. It hasn't happened in the last year. So I think you're going to see a lot more honesty in the debate, a lot yep. more people speaking up, yep. feeling comfortable writing to politicians and to the media, yep. going to visit them, which is what needs to happen. Yep. You know, they need to know that this has public support. But I think they're seeing in, in their focus groups and private polling that this is actually what the people in New Zealand want now. If, 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 Kevin, if, if we're wanting to have an economy that has the taxation base, to look at the kind of social programs that the Greens, Labour Party, New Zealand First are quite keen to champion, taxation of cannabis could certainly provide that money, couldn't it? Oh, I, I think that would be a useful co-benefit, but it's... For me, it's not why I would be uh, legalising. So I would be legalising because it's the right thing to do. Um, and uh, and then I would say, and having legalised, uh, that taxation revenue is kind of useful. I wouldn't be doing it because of the revenue. Right. Um, but look, I, I, I just want to endorse what, what Chris is saying there. You know, I think that um, from where, where I sit in the House, I look around the House and see... A lot of uh, politicians who are uh, scared about about what voters will think, and in particular, scared about what their voters will think. Yeah. And so I think uh, having people go along to to see their MPs um, and actually do that careful lobbying is exactly the right approach. That's what's actually going to secure us this this reform in the long run. Damien, you're a you're a fairly straight uh, cat. Uh, does it? What is it going to take to, to to get your voters on side with this? I, th I think you know the seventy five percent plus of people support the medicinal use of cannabis. Yeah. The important thing is to move ahead and and keep that public support. And the issue of decriminalisation or legalisation is another issue. It, of course, it's tied in. But if you ask people if you should go the whole hog to decriminalisation, yep. then the level of support would be a lot different. I right. think and my objective has to be, firstly, to make sure we've got access to medicinal use. Yep. The issues of decriminalisation and legalisation, I accept, need to be discussed comprehensively. But the risk is if you push too far too fast, sure. this is kick, kicked on the back burner for another 10 years. I yep. think we need to move forward, Kev. And, and we do have to listen to what our... Our, our voters say because they they decide whether we have the, the power to do this or of not. Course, of course. And, and so you know, every one of us, including Kevin, we're cognizant of of what the wider views are out there. Uh, you, you, you'd also agree, wouldn't you? Those what two hundred and fifty, three hundred, four hundred million dollars worth of taxation every year that wouldn't be bad for the coffers, would it? No, no. But here's the point about taxation. If you're guaranteed to get that tax, and this is what's happened in other regimes, yep. you set up regulations, you've got to have police chasing around enforcing the regulations, yep. and that kind of compliance cost and the difficulty ends up putting it potentially in the hands of the corporates who can handle it. And so, we, you know, there's a number of outcomes that we could have. I don't want... The one with high taxation is probably likely to be high corporatisation, and I'm not sure we want that. Thank you for that. Uh, look, uh, we've got to wrap the show, folks, but let's get a final word from everyone uh, in terms of when will we see real progress on cannabis. I'll start with you, Kevin. When, when do you think we'll politically see real progress on cannabis? Well, I, mean, I think on medicinal we are seeing actually some pretty good progress um, that, that I want to support. Yeah. Um, I think on the broader issue of, uh, of recreational access, I think it's, it's hard to see the Parliament with its current membership actually voting to support that. But, uh, look, I, I would hope that the next government, after 2017, with Labor and the Greens, 
um, sitting pretty prominently within that, um, yep. might be a parliament that could deliver this kind of uh, long overdue change. Uh, Shane, when are we going to see some real progress on cannabis reform? Well, uh, you know, my personal opinion is is, is the. Uh, you know, there's the old school that's that's in the leadership roles at the moment. The next generation are, have got a much more um, liberal view. Yep. And um, you know, that, mm -hmm. that's a bit of a long term. No, I'm not saying when till they all die, but uh. <laughs> 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 these bloody boomers, right? I hear you, brother. I hear you. Uh, um, Chris, when are we going to see some real reform? Well, I think we are. Like what Kevin said, yep. we're seeing some real progress on medical. Um, we've had police arrests drop by 50 percent over yep. the last five years. So, yep. so you know. Parliament hasn't got around to doing it, but the police are doing it anyway. The yep. courts are really trying to keep people out of jail, it seems. Yep. Still far too many people in prison and arrested. But next month we have this meeting in New York, the UNGAS, which yep. is the reform of the, of the drug treaties. Yep. Um, Obama looks set to recommend that everyone decriminalise everything. Yep. And that will be a big um, impediment to um, you know, reform of those treaties, which in turn block our, our reform. Damien, when are we going to see some real reform? Mm. I think we are seeing it now. I committed to try and get a, a private member's bill over medicinal use. Yep. I have to say, it is complex. I want to get it right. Yep. I'm talking to my colleagues, and I, I'm sure with the support of probably the majority of Parliament, we can get medicinal use through Parliament if there's a bill put up. I think Peter Dunn's taken that on board. He's a bit more open to it. I don't know why he turned down um, you know, Helen's request, yep. because there have been requests approved, yep. and work out why he says yes or no so let's keep pushing it i think there'll be legislation that will be widely supported if it's the right legislation focused on medicinal use damien you're a good man doing good yeah. things uh thank you panel i'd like to get a final word i'd like to uh give my final uh word uh what we need in this debate is medical science to make the decision not knee-jerk moral crusades cannabis has medicinal properties and the only reason our leaders can't acknowledge that is because they have spent so much political capital demonizing cannabis i sympathize for those hurt by marijuana but when you consider the thousands maimed, killed and damaged by booze every year and the large number of Māori who are locked up in jail because of it, it's difficult to understand where the hell some of our politicians seem to get their moral high horse from. We need political leadership on cannabis reform. All that's happened by banning cannabis is organised crime profits have jumped. I hope the next government can be genuine about following reason and they seriously look at decriminalising cannabis so that the 1,600 New Zealanders imprisoned and 20,000 convicted over the last six years leading up to 2013 won't be repeated. Being lectured on cannabis by a full-blown alcoholic culture would be funny if it weren't so tragic. The cannabis debate is not our finest hour as thinking adults. The only winners here are organised crime and private prisons. Thank you, panellists, for participating, and thank you, Fano, for watching. We'll join you again 7pm tomorrow night for Watia for the State. Kia ora.